Hello tribe and welcome to Magic Month of May. I am really excited to be sharing the forecast because the hi uh sorry there was just a glitch um so if you are listening live can you let me know that you can hear and see because i want to make sure the technology is working and welcome to magic month of may if you don't know magic month Magic Month is an energy forecast that combines astrology, channeled guidance, um, uh, what's going on seasonally, um, all sorts of things so that you can use the information to have the most aligned month and know the best times to heal, the best times to manifest, understand what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't met me before, my name is Karila, and um, thank you, Laura. It was my birthday yesterday, um, and I uh, am from the Starlight Temple, and Starlight does all sorts of courses and ceremonies and um, spiritual travel that is about using channeled and spiritual tools to become more empowered to assist your ascension and magic month is the oldest webinar i have and it is my rock of a webinar it's like i will not <laughs> go without knowing what the forecast is for myself because it is so 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 helpful to me even in times like this where literally it was my birthday yesterday and tomorrow i am at, at like four in the morning <laughs> I'm flying to Portugal for a sacred sites tour, uh, but I wanted to squeeze Magic Month in, although this might be um, a faster Magic Month than normal just because of my um, personal <laughs> different circumstances bookending this Magic Month. And so, but it, it, I really wanted to do it because at the moment the astrology is just Stella and it's like every month just gets more and more and more juicy and we are about to get juicy uh um may is really really exciting and astrologically it is a month that i would describe as power that's how i would describe may it's like a journey of coming into more of your power, stepping up into your power, exploring power. Yeah, it's all about power. And there's some really amazing astrology. We're going to get straight into it after a short meditation. So when you're ready, closing your eyes. And just taking a fuller breath. Maybe this is the first full breath you have done today. And I invite you to really engage with it, enjoy it. Be carried by it as you feel as you breathe in energy from the earth rising up from your root right up into your crown in your held breath feel the twist and as you breathe out the energy flowing down your spine really cooling your spine. In the no breath, experience your energy twisting, getting ready to rise and traveling up through your center 
energizing and opening your chakras and twisting, traveling down your spine, cooling all the way down to your root and twisting feeling that sense of lift and opening as this energy dances up into your crown and I invite you just to follow this circuit feeling the cooling and the opening, bringing you into center. Helping you become more present. Mm. And more relaxed. More open. And this meditation, where the breath cools as it comes down the spine, opens as it travels up the center, is a particularly good meditation for integration, for grounding. and for embodiment and your power your power is in your body your power is when you are in your body as you feel so slight filling this time and this space mm. your energy expanding into this light in all directions and being sealed from top to bottom in white and golden light and surrounded by rose golden fire And you take this moment to connect to your surrounding. That which is circling around you. It's feeling support. And abundance and love. all directions and as you become aware of all directions of you being surrounded with beauty with support with love bring a breath up through your center, opening your chakras. Let that twist happen in your crown. Breathing out, feeling coolness happening in your spine as you travel down. And feeling that twist of your breath coming up. Opening, energizing your chakras, twisting, flowing back down. Mm. 
Noticing that you're more in your body. That the beauty that surrounds you is the sky. And the earth and life. The love that surrounds you is the sky and the earth and life. And the support that surrounds you is the sky and the earth and life. And opening up. Noticing how you are feeling. Breathing in love. And breathing out gratitude and when you're ready, opening your eyes. And I would love to hear how you are after that opening meditation. Maybe you want to open your heart and tune into if you have an intention for Magic Month. And you're very welcome to share that. I love my webinars to be co-created. And I will ask the guides that question about universal chakras and your own chakras at the end. But I'd like to go straight into the forecast. And so, May. <laughs> May is, yeah, it's a month that is very much about power. It's going to be... an arrival, a turning point, a embodiment of more trust, I feel. It very much feels like a month of like stabilizing into more of your higher self and more of who you are. Um, And yeah, I will ask the question about your, sh I will answer the questions at the end. In fact, that's what we'll do at the end. <laughs> and, you know, those of you that are regulars to Magic Month will know that I have this thing that like what happens at the start of the month really is um, such a, a sign that... Um, it's like the setting the scene. It's like it sets the tone for the month and it really gives you um, loads of insight into how to kind of do the month. And, you know, on the very first of May, there is so much happening. <laughs> There's big stuff happening. And so it's a very busy start to the month, which means that the month is going to be like an action month. It's going to be a month of things arriving and, and, and lots falling into place and pieces of the puzzle. It's like the 1st of May is lots of pieces of the puzzle coming together. Um, the first thing to say is like we are already in the eclipse. It is a very, very powerful eclipse window that we are in. Eclipse windows are times of transformation. This eclipse window is extra strong because it started with a full eclipse. Um, it's really, really cool. I didn't say this in last Magic Month because I only found out afterwards. But um, so eclipse windows are for healing the subconscious. They What they do is they bring up what you haven't seen in your deep psyche and subconscious so that you can see it and change it. And from a spiritual energetic perspective, that is what an eclipse window is for. What's really cool is that the eclipse we just had that opened the window, that eclipse is like a really rare eclipse because it looks exactly the same. The sky is exactly the same as an eclipse that happened 20, well, 19 years ago, um, 2004. And my invitation to you for the rest of this eclipse window is just start to connect to what you have been doing <laughs> since 2004 work out what age you were 
and then look at the patterns that maybe started around that age and that have just been running through your life ever since because this window is an opportunity to change and shift those patterns and it's amazing because I was like mm, 2004 what was I doing and and it wasn't like a big year for me it wasn't like one of the years that like was totally totally life-changing but as I've been doing myself work I'm like yep I am healing <laughs> the patterns that really subtly arrived within me or really became decisions within me at the age uh, that I was then. And everybody else that I know that has found out about this is like, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> And so this eclipse window is an opportunity to clear out some really ingrained stuff, stuff you've been doing for nearly 20 years, stuff you've been operating from, stuff that has become habitually you. And I, I so recommend working out what age you were and really, really, really tuning in to what, to what you were doing, what became a habit, um, and doing ceremony and doing self work in the eclipse window to release those those paradigms that are in your cells from two thousand and four, and it's an embodiment eclipse. So it's a really huge time to clear out space, which is why you're working with these like. 19 year old ingrained habits or belief systems I'll give you an example um so you know 19 years ago I was 20 and the big pattern that I am working on this year is a part of my ego <laughs> that didn't want to grow up and I'd already been working on that. It's like my big wound of this year. But what's amazing to me is, of course, like 20, you're just about to turn 21. Like, that's really where I made the decision that I wasn't going to, like, go properly into adult life. And it has been amazing <laughs> living a very, very alternative lifestyle. But I can also have been, like, looking really closely at, you know, where I haven't been that mature in relationships, for example, or where I haven't grown up in ways that like making sensible decisions for my future and things like that. And and so, you know, that isn't like a core traumatic wound from my childhood. But that decision that I made at 20 has absolutely had huge effect over the next 19 years and that's what I mean it's like get into the details and then it's like whoa you know you go deeper and and you're like oh there's loads of ways that I that that's been playing out and so if you can identify by journaling by taking it to ceremony by doing safe work those like core core um belief systems that either activated or initiated or were chosen 19 years ago, you're going to have a really powerful eclipse. And why it's so important in this eclipse window is because this eclipse window is very much about the habitual consciousness and the body um, and making room for the new to embody and the only way to make room into in the body is to change that habit and so that's why it's so good to look at like long-term habitual unintentional patterns that you've been running for 19 years the cosmos is so clever and so I, i'm just excited to read yeah how exciting is this yeah, I'm so glad your guys are on it and are like, oh my gosh. Um, and amazing that it was a big shake-up year for you. Okay, so May, 
obviously the first of may is the festival of beltane in the northern hemisphere and the festival of beltane is like the sexy festival <laughs> it's the festival where that celebrates the fact that the whole of nature is horny and conceiving um it's about the kind of marriage of the male and female it's the magdalena um tantric season yeah when we do our manifesting on our cycle journey on a starlight courses beltane is um the time of ovulation for a woman and and this is the time where you really learn to hold energy and holding energy is kind of the the optimum creative state you can be in so beltane is always a really really powerful time to be manifesting and creating and working with your life force energy and and germinating um at the same time this year we have pluto that has just entered aquarius which is huge biggest astrological thing happening this year in march pluto entered aquarius so this is the first pluto retrograde of pluto in aquarius and pluto in aquarius hasn't happened for two, 200 years pluto in aquarius is very much about a shift in power from top down power which in ourselves is like head first power to more holistic power which in 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 the way is the body um and on the bigger picture level it's very much about a shift out of top down power and into power to the people and there is also a real theme in Pluto and Aquarius that is so the the kind of shadow the really dark side of Pluto and Aquarius is like an AI timeline it's like robots take over because technology is Pluto and Aquarius technology great power in technology and the kind of best possible version of Pluto and Aquarius is community you know, power to the collective, power to the hive, power of the people. And we're kind of at that crossroads, really. But one thing that I was really connecting to uh, yesterday was that, you know, the only reason AI or artificial intelligence is considered intelligent is because it actually gather it's actually community intelligence like it's actually loads of different people's information and ideas together and community intelligence collective intelligence will always be more intelligent than artificial intelligence because when we come together we have heart and we have life force energy and we have instinct and we have multi-dimensional connection and i believe that the way to not go down that that crazy robot wars reality pathway is to just do something better <laughs> which is community and intelligence or collective intelligence and i feel like this is being said on the 1st of may because the 1st of may beltane is all about life force energy so i feel like the sky is just like if you want to do pluto and aquarius well which is for the next 25 years make sure you're embodied make sure the life force energy make sure you're connected make sure you're living the themes of beltane and that is how you have the the best pluto and aquarius now retrograde um, when a planet retrogrades, it means it's going the opposite direction in the sky. So when Pluto in Aquarius is retrograding, what it's saying is like, this is the time for deep inner work. This is the time for you to come into greater community within yourself. And this is topped <laughs> by Mercury 
that's also in retrograde and mercury is the planet of like communication mercury is conjunct with the sun on may the 1st as well and that when a when when a conjunction happens what happens is is the two energies meet merge they become one energy so so mercury the planet of communication is merging with the sun which represents truth and to me this is like so firstly this when mercury and the sun are conjunct it is all about like intuition and insights and clarity and um new cycle um but the fact that it's happening on the on beltane and on pluto retrograding in aquarius to me it's like the sky is saying you gotta live your truth you know mercury conjunct with the sun is like be in your truth be your truth live your truth and that's how that's how this pluto in aquarius power is going to work for you live your truth in your voice which is your outer sexual energy and with your sexual energy with your beltane energy flowing through your body and so it is really really a like powerful start to the month it's just like bang here we go show time are you ready and then straight after that that's like the medicine for this eclipse window it's like be your truth be holistic <laughs> be in community with yourself and everyone else and then on the 5th of may we have the scorpio full moon um and you know scorpio <laughs> is death and rebirth it's a full moon lunar eclipse and so it's going to be an emotional powerful time to be in ceremony powerful time to be releasing powerful time to be letting go um powerful time to be calling in change you know all of the insights you've had in the last two weeks of the eclipse window this is the time to like state them out loud and say i release this i no longer live this i choose i choose to be in my power i choose to live my truth i choose to embody very 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 powerful time to be in ceremony especially any kind of rebirth or transformation type of ceremony journaling is a really really powerful thing to do this whole month um and not typing journaling like written journaling is a really powerful thing to do this whole month um and and so the eclipse window is going to go out with a bang when it's scorpio <laughs> what you've got is like more sexual energy <laughs> <laughs> more body energy more beltane energy in a death and rebirth state in a heightened emotional state and and it it really is a resolution eclipse you know it is an a completion eclipse window anyway so it's like time to wrap things up time to wrap up the last 19 years show time you know and so the first part of the month is big. It is big for self-work. It is big for ceremonial work. It is big for journaling work. It is big for deep diving and listening and healing. And then on May, May 9th, we have the sun is conjunct with Uranus. And so to me, it's like the integration of the eclipse window and this incredible journey that in a way is a journey that started in February <laughs> this year. Um, the kind of first stages of this year are, are, are coming into integration after the eclipse. And what you have on the 9th of May is the sun, which is truth, conjunct with Uranus. And Uranus is revolution. And this, you know, this happens once a year and it's like an unlocking of creativity and rebellion and and freedom and change and like waking up our truth and and yeah it's like if you this guy's saying if you do the work in the eclipse window you know very quickly you're going to be integrating into freedom 
into this sense of new truth, embodied, new, shiny, shiny truth. Because that's the first astrological thing that happens after the eclipse window. That's where the eclipse window is going. And then on May 14th, Mercury goes direct. So Mercury comes out of retrograde, stationing in Taurus. Taurus is so important right now because the themes of Taurus have been running all through April. They're running through a lot of May. And and I really want you to connect to to what Taurus is about. Taurus is about embodied truth, embodied happiness, embodied aliveness. One of the things I really love in Taurus is it's like you have you can have these amazing philosophical spiritualities that are all about like going death and rebirth and you know a lot of the other <laughs> a lot of the other signs in many ways are like so much more than Taurus is in the sense of like yes climb up the top of the mountain if you're Capricorn or be the king if you're Leo you know um but when Taurus is there, it's like, yes, journey all those places, but have you eaten? And are you eating well? And yes, you can find God at the top of a mountain, but can you find gratitude at the bottom of your bowl? You know, there is this like simplicity, like are you living it? under the energy of Taurus so when Taurus is very present it's like are, are you living it and are you really indulging it are you enjoying it are you receiving it and and you know again this is integration time for the eclipse because Mercury began to retrograde just at the time of the solar eclipse last month and so um this is you know this is the time that that the, the inner journey we've been on in the eclipse is going to start to be integrated realized and take your integration seriously <laughs> because taurus is is uh, because mercury is direct in taurus it's like yeah are you are you eating the change you know this eclipse window i'm doing this amazing amazing course called body love that is literally looking at how you love yourself through the rituals of the body. And it is absolutely amazing and fascinating. You know, I have done so many years of self-work and yet when I actually zoned out and went, okay, but Am I truly loving myself in the way I eat and the way I exercise and the way I rest? And what you learn when you look at yourself through those Taurian rituals is just phenomenal, just phenomenal. You know, like the guidance that is coming through, the way you exercise is the way you believe in yourself. The way you rest, that is an, an actual reflection of your relationship with who you are, your relationship with yourself. And, you know, the reason that I'm doing body love at the moment is because my guide said that the reason so many people are not embodying <laughs> their spiritual practices and their medicine ceremonies is because they're still op they're still eating and exercising and resting and running the old paradigm of who they used to be in the everyday rituals. So they might be really amazing at affirmation and having a morning practice and going to ceremony and, and doing all of these new earth, new age things. And yet they still have a really unhealthy, destructive relationship when it comes to food or when it comes to rest. And 
they're still running their unloveness in those rituals and those patterns and so and what they lit what the guy said it is that it stops you from integrating because only when those rituals change can the changes you've made on your energy level and your consciousness level integrate and so i really really invite you in this post eclipse window time whether you've done body love or not in this post eclipse window time be more intentional you know through our body we can only live habitually or intentionally be more intentional in what you're eating in how much rest you're getting in in how you're exercising see if you can live your love through through the daily rituals because that is how you will embody and there is so much to embody we've been on such a roller coaster astrologically and this time period kind of from the 5th to the 14th of of may is a really really important time for integration and the sky says it <laughs> because also on the 14th at the same time that mercury goes direct and action starts to happen jupiter is square pluto and jupiter is like the good planet a planet of like abundance and path and fulfillment of self and expansion and pluto is the subconscious and death and rebirth and shadow and transformation and when two planets are square they're like they're like up against each other and this means that It's almost like, are you going to choose the old habits of your shadow and your trauma and your unconscious self? Or are you going to step up into your higher self? Into the new laws, into the new rules, into the new ways? Are you going to embody your power? Or aren't you? Really, really powerful time to do any work around power. And I'm just going to say that, you know, there's a lot of energy around the word power. Power. The root meaning of the word power means to be able. It is the same root meaning as the word magic. To be able. Power is about your capability to be yourself, to be your truth, to do it your way. And so this is, this is like, it's like if you're not living it, if you're not integrating it, if you're not applying that body love truth then then you're going to be straight back in pluto in the unconscious habitual shadow but if you do live it if you do change it if you do integrate it between may 14th and and 21st you're really stepping up into your power claiming your confidence back claiming your energy back right in the middle of this <laughs> so if if that wasn't kind of enough that jupiter square pluto right in the middle on may 16th algal who is a one of the stars one of the um so algal <sighs> to be honest, I can't remember if Algol is an asteroid or a star. I've talked about Algol a lot. I just can't remember. Algol, I, Algol is aligned with the sun. And Algol is the, it represents shadow. It's the star that represents shadow. And shadow, so Algol is the head of Medusa in astrology and medusa the story of medusa is shadow work so medusa has a traumatic experience um she gets raped by poseidon and is punished by athena 
who turns her into a gorgon and she has to live underground and everyone that looks at her uh, turns to stone. And eventually the hero of the story comes along and he has a mirror. So when she looks at herself, when she faces her own shadow, the shadow itself turns to stone and he cuts off her head and out of her head flies Pegasus, the golden free winged horse. And so this is the story of shadow work. <laughs> like when you look at the thing you're not looking at and even though it was never really your fault in your first, the first place, but when you look at it and and face it and see how it's causing others to react and respond to you and forgive it and, and meet it with, with your truth, which is always compassion, then you are liberated. And then you ascend and then you are free. And... And so Algol has this real shadowy energy to it because it's like it's like that Kali Ma energy. It's like look at what you don't want to see. Be so honest with yourself. <laughs> you know, look in the mirror. You don't want to look in it. And find your strength and your power that way. Find find your courage. And so the May 16th is a really powerful time for shadow work, for transformation work, for for more integration of what you've been doing in, in the eclipse. So like diving deep into anything you might have missed during the eclipse window. And it's happening in the middle of Jupiter square Pluto. So it's like, look at where you're not walking your path because you're operating from the past. Where are you turning your life to stone rather than being a flying golden horse? That's, that's what you have to look at. And, and because it's to, connected to the sun, it's like, what, what is a false truth? You know, we can have experiences and they can become our truth even though they are not the full truth. My thing, <laughs> my example I gave of not growing up, like, the truth is I did grow up because <laughs> I'm nearly 40. <laughs> so I did grow up. Um, it's not true, but it's been a truth that I've, it's been a belief system that I have lived as a truth. And this is what this month is about. It's like, get rid of those things that are almost true. Almost true is not your truth. And almost true is what is in your way of your Jupiter. And so this month is like, get to the truth. That's why journaling is so good this month. Because journaling is funny. I've had so many signs about journaling lately. And it's and, and then I was actually guided to do it. And it, it's like, because you need to kind of get the noise out of you. And writing it out is getting it out. It's like flushing it out. If I would set an intention for this month, it would be like, what is the truth? And at the same time that that is happening, on exactly the same day, May 16th, Jupiter is entering Taurus. So, you know, it's like time for the shadow work to show up in the everyday rituals. In you every day. Time for your higher self to download. Time to ground. Time to be here in your in your real truth now, not your almost truth, not your convenient truth, not your truth that is based in fear, the truth of your love. Because your power is your love. And if you're not embodied, you're not in your power, that's what this month is saying. Get in your body, get your life force energy and your heart energy in your body, come through your body because your body is your integrity and your body is your sovereignty. 
to this day, absolutely, May 16th, be in ceremony. <laughs> online, alone, with others, wherever you are guided to be, be in the ceremony. Because this, this time period up until the 19th of May, which is a Taurus new moon, so again, embodiment, integration, arrival, same thing, Taurus just carrying us through at the moment. This is about getting back. You know, this period up until the 19th is integration of the eclipse window. And then we have the Taurus new moon. And the Taurus new moon, it feels cool, feels calming. The best thing you can do on this new moon, I feel, is like bodywork, yin, integration, stillness, meditation, simple, things that allow you to rest and recharge and receive. The best type of self-work I can suggest is integration work. This is not a new moon for intentions this is a new moon for new beginnings beginning because you are integrating let it all arrive you know eat <laughs> eat honoring the energy in food and receive that energy so that you have the energy to integrate. Go to yin yoga, go to silent meditation, sweat. All of these things are really, really good for integration. And at the same time, on exactly the same day, Mars is conjunct with Pluto. And so Mars is the warrior energy, the masculine energy, the action energy. It's conjunct with Pluto. And so its energy is merged with Pluto. So there's, 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 if you're not <laughs> integrating, if you're not grounding, you're going to be broken. It's going to be like, a day of like breakdown and volatility and heat and anger, you know? It's like if you can't ground that energy properly, if you can't integrate that energy properly, then how I see it is like, if you can ground, if you can be in that Taurus new moon state and that in a way a feminine state, then this explosion of the inner work you've done over the last few months can really ripple through you and become you. And if you don't, you're just going to be ratty and uh, full of anxiety and, yeah, overcharged and it's not going to be anchoring in. You know, this is also a powerful day from that calm place <laughs> to think about your path actions, to make new choices and new actions. And that's why I'm saying bring it into the rituals of the body. One of the greatest places we can be conscious is in the everyday rituals. That is like breaking the chain, you know, like the 19 years that you've been doing the same patterns. Do it differently. And hold. Remember the start of the month was like, can you hold this energy? Can you hold this death and rebirth and this expansion? Can you hold Pluto in Aquarius? Can you hold community power? In this middle of the month, this 19th of May, this new moon is like, come on then, hold it. So what this guy's saying is handing the power to us. It's like, hold it. And that Pluto-Mars conjunct energy can hold it if you are grounded, if you are embodied. 
And then on May 21st, we come out of Taurus and we come into Gemini. And there's this beautiful raising up and opening up and philosophy and creative energy. And seeing new perspectives. You know, in a way, it's like the whole journey is leading towards Gemini because Gemini is about the mortal being immortal. That's what embodiment is. The immortal embodied in the mortal, you know? So, like, everything is just so much about alignment because your power happens in alignment. And, like, the truth is I'm giving you advice, but, like, actually, just do what's right for you. Just follow you. Just be you. That's your power. Just be true. Be honest. And then on the 27th of May to the 29th of May, Saturn is uh, the sun and Saturn are square. And so square is like they're, you know, challenging each other. And the sun is truth and Saturn is like law and order. And it's like, is your truth in order? <laughs> is your truth, are you in alignment? Or are you following the truth of everybody else? like a, another kind of um yeah almost like a opportunity to break truth that isn't really truth that is almost truth to break free of almost truth if that is the mantra of the month it's like break free of almost truth And Saturn's in Pisces, and so Pisces is like where we were, you know. Pisces is like the past, our past. And so this is a powerful time for ancestral healing, powerful time for family healing, powerful time to just set the intention every day to align. Do you know how I do that? <laughs> I set my alarm at like 7.07 .07 or 8.08, .08, so like I wake up in alignment, and that's my intention. And it's like, even that is a really powerful ritual and a really powerful ceremony to be doing in, in Saturn Square with the Sun. And then right at the end of the month, uh, on the 29th to the 31st, we have the Algebraan Gateway. And Algebraan is one of the royal stars. And like, I've got obsessed with the royal stars lately. Um, the royal stars are like superstars in our sky. They're like high frequency um, guardians of the north, the south, the east, and the west. And um, Algebraan is like aligned with our sun. And it's called the Silver Gate Portal. And this is a time where, so Algebraan is like enlightenment like kind of reincarnation and enlightenment and all of the royal stars have this kind of superhuman quality and it's like this gateway is like merge with your higher self or or reincarnate into your higher self it's like a really like high vibrational the royal star gateways are such like a showering of of cosmos and so this is the end of this month it's like embody 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 and embody your higher self <laughs> you know um i'm gonna do something starlight's gonna do something for the hour different great way because it's it's all about like protection and intuition and um soul contract fulfillment and really connecting to yourself through your soul star portal you know through your your higher self um and enlightening yourself And in many ways, enlightenment is like living in total compassion and total love. 
living the love of your soul. And so it's such a beautiful end. Like this month, it's going to be a rock and roller coaster, you know? It's going to shake you up. It's going to make you face to yourself. It's going to be one of those months that's like, slap you in the face, wake up. It's a month where there is no hiding. <laughs> you know, there's no hiding. And a month where there's loads of opportunities for healing, which means there's loads of opening and, and rawness and churning and challenge. But you're being opened up for the algebra and gateway. This month is like embody your love, embody the power of your love, embody the power of your higher self. And everything that's turning up and rock and rolling, that's just your, that's just your, that's just what's in the way, being cleared. It's just you being shown really, really, really clearly. So you can remember why you came here and what your soul purpose is and get really fine tuned with it. Stop wasting your life force energy on almost truth. Your soul purpose is your truth. And it's a month, this is the final thing I say, it's a month that is a pilgrimage. We are living in a time of pilgrimage. And pilgrimage is a journey where your trust gets strengthened and evolved. And that's what this month is going to do. Evolve your trust. Because when you trust more, you can embody more. And so how beautiful is this month? Like, I just feel like this month is astrologically perfect. <laughs> it's like the right balance of, like, brilliant high, and amazing stuff. Lovely support is very, very well organized. <laughs> Lovely curves and journeys and just... Yeah, it's a perfect month. It ends in a beautiful gateway. It starts in a powerful gateway. It's amazing. And so that's me. Um, that's me. And so this is this is magic month of May. I am not going to stay much longer either. I know some of you have to go. <sighs> the card I've pulled for the month is inner child. Allow me to give compassion and love to that little one. Let me attend to its deepest needs and feelings. Whatever patterns began 19 years ago. Our patterns, if they are unhealthy, they are, they are patterns that are unhealthy for your inner child, that are unhonoring of your inner child. And, you know, I had a beautiful message from an ascended master in March that was just like, Enlightenment just means constant compassion, <laughs> like just non-stop compassion. That's enlightenment. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like sometimes we get up in our heads about ascension and it's like, actually, no, are you being compassionate? Are you treating your inner child as a divine child? Are you holding yourself in unconditional compassion? That's the medicine. And it's going to be such a powerful month. At the moment, um, Starlight does not have that much on offer. Um, we will have stuff. So do join our mailing list. Um, if you want to be supported, then, uh, so I'm, like I said, going to Portugal tomorrow. Uh, it's a land work journey that is very much about life force. And anybody that's part of the Starlight Sanctuary, um, which is a really, really, really affordable membership service, um, 
you will be part of that journey. You will receive channelings and transmissions and activations as we go to diff different sites wherever you are in the world. And it it is all about learning to embody your life force energy. So if that bit of the Beltane is resonating with you, come into the sanctuary. We will also be holding stuff around the key dates um, for sanctuary members for sure. If... Um, the sanctuary doesn't call you i still recommend signing up well you should definitely try it out anyway because you can try it for free anyway <laughs> um and it's a really powerful month to do that uh, but uh, the other thing i would say is in the sanctuary is hive mind which is collective intelligence that is more intelligent than ai you know like this thing of like collective intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence I just know that we have to gather, we have to, we have to brainstorm together, we have to, we have to see that like, it's still our intelligence in artificial to get intelligence, the only thing that makes it feel like it's more intelligent than us is we are individuals. But when we are together, there is no force <laughs> more powerful than human hearts and minds together. Um, and so hive minds are regular in the sanctuary as well. If ever you want collective intelligence, if ever you want to like bring a problem to try, that is part of one of the many amazing offerings in the sanctuary. And if you don't want to join the sanctuary, I and want to experience hive mind, then I am doing a hive mind. It's on the home page of the website. Um, it's for a project that I have, but it's just such an amazing experience of what I mean about Pluto in Aquarius. So please, and that's free. So please do come along to to Hive Mind if you're free on the thirteenth. Um, and yeah, there will be like there will be loads of other offerings I'm doing. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to do something for that algebra and gateway. So please sign up to our mailing list it will probably be a by donation thing or uh, definitely an affordable thing if it's not by donation for the algebra and gateway um and i will be sending out whatever's aligned about that middle of the month and finally the body love guidance that has been coming through has been so profound that if you're like, oh, I missed the eclipse window, body love, fear <laughs> um, not, <laughs> because I, I'm i just like, I want to do more with body love. This is so fascinating and it's so interesting. And I'm pretty sure that we are going to do like a long term journey of like four to six months for people that really want to dive in to how they are treating themselves and it's like no frills it's like the truth of what you're doing <laughs> in the everyday rituals and it's so powerful and it's like you realize that like your father's playing out in this and your mother's playing is just amazing it's amazing and it's such a powerful map the body and so yeah um all of that is coming there's lots and lots and lots of juiciness um all of it's going to be coming once i'm back from portugal <laughs> but if you want to follow in portugal then just join the sanctuary and, and you'll get to be part of that journey and that service work and receive loads of wonderful channelings and activations as we journey through the sacred sites of portugal um I'm just going to answer there was, um, can I handle the truth? I think that May is like, you better be able to handle the truth. <laughs> I don't think we have a choice. It's like the universe is going to be like, you can handle the truth. Um, in the most loving, gentle way, not as a slap, as a gentle pat. Uh, what was I going to... There was a question that I was going to ask. Okay, so just to close, I am just going to tune in about how to unblock. Oh, I'll put the Portugal journey up um, so you can get to the 
payment page and an old channel. That's the Denny you can be part of through the sanctuary if you want to be. <laughs> so I ask for the highest level guidance to flow through me now about how to unblock the chakras. <laughs> Unblocking is what this time of self-inquiry and self-discovery and self-ceremony is all about. Not just unblocking chakras, but unblocking truth, unblocking flow, unblocking... The power of your vibrational field and the power of your body. There are many, many, many ways to unblock chakra meditations and breath work being particularly effective. But what we will say to you is that at this time, working with life force energy and exploring how life force energy moves through the chakras and inviting new directions and new passageways in your experience of feeling your life force energy flowing through the chakras this is the most effective way to unblock your chakras at this time it is to do things differently to be in a state of creating new pathways you do this when you change the rituals, when you change the habits of your everyday. And you can, of course, do this with meditation. They show me that the current meditation of the month in the sanctuary is also very good for unblocking it. it I'll give you a version of it now so that we can close. So closing your eyes <clears throat> and connecting to Mother Earth and your grounding cord and feeling fresh prana, new prana from the heart of the earth, flowing up your grounding cord, flowing into your auric field, circulating your auric field, and flowing into your root chakra and circulating your body, and flowing into your heart chakra and circulating through your heart coming out of your heart chakra and circulating back through your body coming out of your crown and circulating through your aura traveling up shooting up out of the top of your aura and circulating the shape of the sun 
cascading down around the edges of your aura and down your grounding cord back into the earth and then circulating back up coming up your grounding cord and you go through the round again and it 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 will if if you imagine a different pathway every time you will notice that not just your chakras but your whole of your meridian system free up i will um if anybody wants to write to me and ask for that meditation, I would be very happy to send it to you because I do have to go because <laughs> Joe, who is coming to Portugal with me, is at the door. <laughs> I have to let her in because I overrun after saying that Magic Month is going to be early. Um, I love you all very much. I hope you have the most amazing May and thank you all so much for your light and your truth with a capital T. Ah, so much love to you.